we now have hopefully established ownership of our songs. Okay. It's great to own something, but ultimately we want to make a couple dollars from it, right? This is the music business. <laughs> it is the business. You know, everyone likes the music part, but nobody likes the business part. So why don't we discuss just for a minute how you make money off of a song? Okay. Okay. That's fair. Version number one is I'm also the artist. So I go out and I perform my song. Performance royalties. Okay. Performance royalties. So in a couple sentences, what is a performance royalty? Well, you can, um, you can receive royalties from performances. Now that doesn't necessarily mean live performances. That also could be recorded performances, such as what they do with radio. It's still considered performance royalties either way. Um, but let's go back to the live stage situation. I think right now, uh, well, I do know that at CSAC, if you send them in your set list and you tell them the venue that you're playing, the date that you're playing, they will log that in and you will be paid on your work. Now, CSAC is a performing rights organization, works with publishers and songwriters and tries to recoup monies that are on performance royalties. That's where they come from. So this money is not coming from the owner of the bar. It's coming from an organization, CSAC, that is collecting this money on my behalf. Right. Okay. Well, the owner of the bar does have to pay a license to CSAC, but yes. But he doesn't pay directly to me. It, it comes through this organization. Exactly. Okay. Now, I do understand that BMI, which is the second yes. um, performing rights organization here in the United States, has just implemented the same policy. Oh, good. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. ASCAP's. Still, I think, is lagging a little, bit, a little behind. That's the third one. There are three in the, the three United big States. Ones. So yeah. The three big ones. Um, and so ASCAP does not, from what I understand, and I hope that a representative from ASCAP calls me and corrects us so that we can uh, give them an extra plug, but BMI has it and CSAC has it, where you know a songwriter or a band that's performing some one of the members' songs – uh, once they read, once they send in that form with the song title and you know the copyright owner and the date, then they potentially could get paid from that. Okay, so I know from experience that this gets complicated really fast because as a musician, you tend to think you play a gig, you get paid by the venue, and that's all you make. But really, what you're saying is, in theory, you should also be paid royalties if you're performing your own material. Well, it would make sense. The The venue is making money off of your music, and wouldn't it be nice that they would pay to have the use of that music in their venue, and the songwriter would then actually benefit from that? I mean, right. the other songwriters that are playing from the jukebox or from the music that they play are getting paid. Why shouldn't the performers who are on stage playing their own material receive performance royalties for that. I mean, right. it just makes sense. So let me take it a step further. Let's say that I have this song that I play occasionally, but you actually like this song better than I do. So every time you play, you play one of my songs. Okay. Who gets paid for that? The songwriter should get paid. Which is me. Which is you. But I would be paid for doing the performance. Yes. Hopefully. You know, as long as it's not one of those ticketing deals. But we'll talk about that. In but that would... Pod. So so you would get paid by the venue for, the, for your gig. I, in theory, should receive royalties on the song that, of mine that you performed. Yes. And I will give you permission to, to perform any of my songs whenever you want, just so I can get paid for them. So, there you go. So feel free. <laughs> that's perfect. Okay. Yes, that's exactly right. So that's the live performance kind of situation. And then we can expand that a little bit and say, go okay, ahead. same thing happens with radio. So right. if you're on internet radio, on terrestrial. Terrestrial. Yes, that one. It's a big word. Uh, th yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. And then um, and that way you also get paid for your performance uh, of your song on some sort of, I, I'll use the word radio, even yeah. though it's becoming, uh, you know. Yeah, whether whether it's radio waves through the air or radio over the internet, it's, it's radio as far as. Right. We're concerned, yes. And they do the same thing. They pay a license fee for the use of music so that they can then play music uh, and sell advertising. But if it wasn't, if you know, I would think that most radio stations, if they could, would have no music and only advertising. Of course. But in order to keep you attuned to whatever they're trying to sell you, they're also thinking about, okay, well, we have to put together a quality sh radio show or some sort of, you know, 
tunes in order for you to stay tuned to listen to their advertising. Right. And then because of that, you, they are actually making money off of your song, and therefore they should pay for the right to use that, and they do the same thing. They pay a blanket license to ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC here in the United States, and that way the songwriters then get paid for the use on radio. Right. 